Have you or someone you loved been dealing with health issues? Did you know that it could actually be from breast implants? Today, this is our topic and nothing is off limits. Hello, lovely Dynamic Women, and I am Diane Rolston, your host. This is the Dynamic Women podcast, and I got a couple of very dynamic women here today. I know them personally uh, through our community of Dynamic Women, through networking. They are phenomenal, um, Monica and Mika. Hi, ladies. Hi, Diane. Hi, hi, hi. I am... I'm excited to talk about this because I know how powerful you both are in your truth about how implants have actually caused some health issues in your lives and how you're now quite really good advocates for it. And I just have to say to my listeners, this is not um, necessarily their full-time career. I know Mika, you've kind of got into it a little bit more and I'll share that in your bio, but I want you to know that these are powerful women who run really great businesses. And so they have agreed to come on and talk about this. And uh, let me let you know a little bit more about each of them. So Mika Casey, after two decades of modeling in front of the camera and altering her body to look the way the world told her it had to be, including breast implants, she started to get sick and she left the industry. Years of the toxicity leaching into her body was aging her faster and slowly shutting her body down, leaving her with memory issues, joint pain, fatigue, skin rashes, multiple misdiagnoses all costing her her quality of life and intimacy in her marriage. She spent so much time studying how to heal herself and others and became a certified nutritionist. Changing her diet helped a lot, but she was still having symptoms. And since having her toxic breast implants removed, she got her confidence back and more importantly, her health. She founded a supportive community called Explant Babes, and she's made it her mission to uplift and coach women through the emotional journey of having their implants removed and educating anyone who is considering getting them. Welcome, Mika. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's great to be here. Yes. And what I love um, about what you're doing now is that you're taking your many years of experience in the health industry and bringing it all into the work that you're doing right now. And also the work that you've done in empowering women um, with your community and such. So I love that you're bringing that in. And now let me introduce Monica Meinick. And you might know her on social media and on her website is Monica Diane. What she does is she focuses on identifying clients' emotional, spiritual, and physical needs to help them clarify their goals, identifying obstacles to happiness, and then develop strategies for overcoming each of those barriers. And in creating these strategies, Monica targets clients' unique skills and gifts to help clients make the most of their strengths to build self-confidence, relationships, health, and wellness, and everything needed to achieve long-lasting change. Monica is a certified personal trainer, business owner in nutritional supplementation, blogger focused on 50 plus women, and a natural foods nutrition guru. And she has also helped dozens of women navigate the emotional and physical effects of breast implant illness and the rebuilding of self after an explant, having gone through the process herself. Welcome, Monica. Thank you so much, Diane. It's uh, great to be here. Yes. And so ladies, let's, let's just dive into it. So you had breast implants, you had them removed. A lot of times I meet people getting them put in, but how really have the breast implants, how do they affect your illness? Sorry, how do they affect your health and really bring some illness into your life? Um, Mika, in your intro, we, we alluded to it a little bit and explained a little bit, but why don't you just share um, from your, in your own words right now? Yeah, sure. So uh, they were great for a little while. You know, they were fun and uh, and they were fabulous until they weren't. And the first thing that I started to notice were some memory issues. And I just chalked it up to I'm overwhelmed, I'm a little stressed from work. We operate a successful residential construction company, uh, my husband and I, and little things were starting to show up or slip away. Wow. And um, I just chalked it up to, you know, just being stressed or a new project or a new employee. And then it was, 
fibromyalgia, when a doctor diagnosed me with fibromyalgia, because I had some aches and pains, I thought it was from working out excessively, oh. but then I would go for three days without working out and it would still hurt. So that was one diagnosis. And another one was hypothyroidism. They uh, diagnosed me with that. And of course, each one comes with a prescription that is for life. <laughs> so, um, you know, it was, it was scary and frustrating. They had a lot of blood work done. Um, my blood work was showing up fine. The things that they were testing for, which was wow. really confusing. Um, and in my research, I had fallen in love with traditional Chinese medicine. And I thought, you know, maybe uh, some different sort of doctor would have a different perspective. Yeah. And that's, that's what happened. I went to an old, amazing, uh, traditional Chinese third generation master doctor who worked out of the basement of his home. He was referred by, by somebody and he looked at me right away and he said, Mika, you have dirty blood syndrome. I'm like, what the heck is that? And, um, or sorry, he said, dirty blood ocean is what he said. And it translated in the books to dirty blood uh, syndrome. So that was kind of what gave me a starting place that there was something in my blood that was causing all of these issues. And, um, you know, one thing led to another and uh, <laughs> the journey was long. The journey was long and painful and a lot of struggles and a lot of fear and frustration. I was spending thousands of dollars a month on nutritional supplements and colonics. And um, I mean, you name it. I was, I was doing everything that I possibly could. I changed my skincare. I changed my shampoo, my soap. I mean, you could eat pretty much everything that's in my house. Now I clean my house with lemons and, and vinegar and baking soda. So I, I was eliminating as much as I could to see if it, if those were like contributing factors to my body kind of shutting down, you know? Yeah. Um, the last straw for me, I'll just end with this. The last straw for me was um, when I broke out into a rash on my body. And that was something that I wasn't able to hide because I was able to hide how I was feeling from, yeah. my symptoms, but I wasn't able to hide this rash that showed up on my arms and then my legs and then my stomach and then my back and then my chest. And it would, it would get so itchy that I would bleed. I had to wear gloves or socks on my hands at night. And um, wow. the doctors, you know, when I asked them if it was possible, it was my breast implants, this was years later, it, the consensus was no, not one of them said it was your breast, not one of them. I ended up in um, the ER for palpitations that were so severe that they put me into an MRI and had my lungs checked. They thought I might've had a, a clot. There was nothing wrong. Um, so I went through all of that radiation and that dye and that stress for nothing, you know, and another doctor told me that I had developed allergies and I would need an EpiPen for the rest of my life and sent me off to three different holy specialists. Holy. And so I have an EpiPen in my cupboard that um, because my throat was swelling so bad that I thought I was suffocating. Like, so the symptoms are very real. And when you go to doctors and the doctors tell you there's, it's not your implants, you're, you know, it's this, or it's this, or it's this, or even telling me that you're maybe depressed. I had one doctor put me on antidepressants. Um, you know, they don't, they don't get it as of now. Yeah. So I'm going to, I'll pause you there. And I really want listeners. I want you to think like, that's a long list of things and not just minor things, really severe things. And so right now think like, are you, if you have implants, are you suffering from any of these? Do you know anyone that's suffering from these? And what I really want to also acknowledge you for Mika is the self-awareness to know there's, there's more here, there's more here. And to continue searching rather than just taking what the doctors have said, like, you know yourself more, but what's also crazy is like, I've known you for many years and every time I meet you, and if you're watching on YouTube, you'll see it. You are a vivacious woman. You both are very vivacious and energetic and youthful and positive. And that's always the vibe I get from both of you. And to know, and we'll go into what you were suffering from, Monica, to know that you were suffering for so many years, but still had to put on that like brave face 
And I know you weren't faking it, but that would take a lot of energy and emotional labor to keep that up. So yeah, I mean, like, I'm glad we're talking about this. Monica, how about you? What, what kind of illnesses were showing up for you? Oh my goodness. Uh, well, for starters, I had mine when I was 23. So they were in for 27 years. And my mom had gone through menopause very early in life in her 20s. And so when I started to have night sweats, and I'm talking about like the whole bed night sweats, um, several months after my doctor told me it was just my hormones. And looking back on it, that was the beginning of my body starting to reject them. Um, I just like Mika had major heart palpitations. I, I thought I was having heart attack numerous times. I was in the hospital. They, uh, thought that I maybe had a brain tumor that I had MS. Um, I like Mika have been through every test under the sun, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of blood tests, um, doctors definitely denying that anything was wrong. It must be in your head. I suffered from, again, the rashes. I would get, my face would swell up. You know, I, I looked like the, the elephant man in that movie with, um, wow. uh, with Cher. You know, it, very large. I would get black and blue everywhere. Um, digestion. I had food allergies out the yin yang, which I just thought, okay, all of this is from food. And, you know, I had gone to school for environmental science. So my, my home was already chemical free. So there was nothing that I was doing wrong in that department but the symptoms just grew and grew. And then I got autoimmune. So psoriasis and eczema, um, they tested me for mast cell disorder, which is basically you're allergic to living, you know, even the air you breathe or water can affect you. Um, you can end up in anaphylactic shock. You can end up with swelling. I mean, it's just, it's hair falling out, massive hair alopecia. I have, I still have a little chunk here that doesn't quite grow back. Um, panic attacks, driving down the road and just being overwhelmed with like pins and needles everywhere. And, and literally just feeling like you are dying and nobody gets it. Nobody is seeing it. Um, I started to have a lot of problems with my kidney and my liver. I did lose the function of one of my kidneys. I had the flu and end up in the hospital for a week, almost died. I was within 12 hours of being on dialysis. Um, oh. so the, uh, yeah, the, the head of the nursing department there. So yeah, it takes the hold of your life. And, you know, I went down a very similar path to Mika. I just decided to dive into the natural health realm and spent thousands of dollars. And, and I mean, you know, as Mika can confirm these tests that we get, you know, that are out of pocket when we go to natural paths, they're not cheap. You know, they're 600, yep. 2000, $5,000. It's ridiculous. So, you know, as I was getting sicker and sicker, you know, my bank account was getting smaller and smaller, but yet you can't stop because nobody is hearing you. Um, so thankfully I just kept pushing. And ironically, the one thing that happened that kind of made the light bulb go on. And I realized no matter what a doctor says, I know what is causing this was I saw a video of a, a Facebook video um, of a friend of mine, a friend of a friend in business. And she went through the same thing and said, it was her implants. And it was literally two months later, I was on a plane to Costa Rica to have them out. Wow. And, um, yeah. And I've never been healthier. All those symptoms, I would say probably 95% of the symptoms are gone. The autoimmune is a tough one because you've, you've wrecked a part of your body. That's really hard to, to repair. And um, that just might be one of the consequences that I have to live with, but it's been a learning experience and uh, yeah. So you are how many years out from I am three and a half in November. It will be four years, four years. And Mika, your shorter amount of time, how long? Yeah. Four and a half months. Yeah. And have you seen a reduction in all these symptoms from it? Oh yeah. Uh, oh yeah. The very first thing that I noticed was that I could take a deep breath. Like, I mean, the very, the very first wow. thing was like, Oh my gosh, my lungs are filling up. My diaphragm is filling up. I can, I feel full of air. Like it was, I didn't realize how I wasn't breathing until I was breathing. So, um, and everything has, my skin has cleared up. The fog has lifted. Like my husband is just so happy. He's so excited. Like I've got my wife back every, I'm getting up at 5.30 in the morning. I couldn't get up before 9 a.m. I would sleep 14 hours and still be exhausted. And now I'm I like, I'm just excited about life. And I, I just, everything has changed. Everything has changed. Everything. Yeah. Now, Monica, for you, how, 
how has this really changed how you view your body? Because they were part of you for 27 years. Yeah. And I, like, I, I've had a couple of kids. I know how, how my breasts have changed over the years. Like, how do, how do you view yourself now? Well, it, it has honestly been a process. Um, I had several people tell me before I got them out because I was very large chested. I was a double D mm. and I don't even fit into an A cup right now. So, you know, it was a, it was a really big difference. Um, I had a lot of friends say, oh, this is going to be so hard on you. But I think you get to the point that you are just so sick. You're sick and tired of being so sick that you yep. just you don't, don't care. care. Yep. You just don't care. Right. So, but having said that, you know, I'll fully admit, and I have to preface this, I was actually, it'll be three years come November. I was doing the math. I'm like, oh, it's not four. It'll be three. Okay. That's um, <laughs> but I, to begin with, I was elated. It was like, oh my gosh, I have a new body. It was kind of, it was kind of a novelty, right? You know, I was being called all oh, the fitness check because I'm very active. And all of a sudden I looked more of a fitness check than a Barbie. Um, so, you know, it was kind of fun. Um, and then, you know, the second year was like, okay, now I'm, now I'm getting used to this and it's, it's not so fun because all the clothes that, you know, that I had yes. don't fit, I'm starting to adjust and a little bit of the, gosh, you know what? I kind of miss my old body. I kind of, I kind of miss the voluptuousness of it. Um, I don't miss the illness. I don't miss the sickness. I don't min- miss the copious, you know, dollars down the drain and trying to figure out what yes. was wrong with me. Um, but you know, there was that part of me that I started to miss looking like I did. So that was kind of year two. And I I like to think of it as almost like a grieving process. You have to go through the stages. You have to, you can't skip a phase. You have to go through all the phases. So now I'm in the third year and now I've come full circle and, you know, I love my body. Um, You know, I think it's really important that you're surrounded by people who are really, you know, body positive, you know, that's all the hashtag nowadays, but it is true. Um, you know, and, you know, what I also did when I was in year two and feeling really, you know, quite honestly, terrible about my body in some, with some respects, you know, trying on a bathing suit. Well, let me tell you, it's a totally different look, (laughs) right? So I deleted all of the social media things that would trigger me, you know, that would make me feel less than about myself. And I started focusing on the ones that were more like me, you know, the girls that had a small chest, the fitness girls and the body positivity stuff and the breast implants. And then I started to realize there's a lot of us. And then I started to sure. kind of come full circle and, and really accept myself for who I am and, and love myself. And, and I wouldn't go backwards. There, there's no way. I mean, you yeah. couldn't, if I could undo those years physically, you know, the, the, basically the living hell that you go through, I, I absolutely will. Um, but I also do believe that it was a blessing in disguise that I've learned something that a lot of people can now benefit from. And hopefully I can prevent somebody from having to go through the, the same, you know, physical, emotional and mental turmoil that that we all go through as explant babes. Yeah. And so listeners, two key things I want you to hear from or remember from what Monica just said, the first being grieving the loss of what was. And so even if you, if it's not around having um, implants, you might've lost a lot of weight and now you've lost the curves or maybe after having children, your body is not how it is or whatever it may be, grieving what was in your life or in your body is a true thing. Like Monica said, don't skip a step. And the other, the other really great thing is when you see yourself being triggered by looking at certain people or things, just stop looking at them. So if it's a friend, you can mute notifications, right? You can turn them off for a while. You don't have to, it's okay to not stare at them. It is okay. I know for me, I've added a lot of heavier set fitness women uh, and women who are loving their squishiness and their bodies, their real bodies big or small that's really helped me for sure how about you uh, Mika how has it changed how you've viewed your body you're in the earlier stages of this change yeah and thank you Monica for sharing what you just shared it was beautiful um I you know I spent more than 20 years in front of the camera so um it's an interesting observation because I, I've i recently been going back and looking through some of my modeling photos from pre-implant days. And I had mine put in when I was 23 years old. So, um, and a lot of the work that I have in my old, you know, 
modeling books and things like that were pre pre implant days, and I was gorgeous and I you know I had a great body and I, I so I, I think I have an issue more with why did I do that like that's that's what I'm I'm struggling with why did I do that why did I not see myself as enough at age 23 when the you know the men I was dating thought I was enough my girlfriends thought I was enough the it, it was just it, it was really it's an interesting um, thing to go back on and to reflect on so now when I, when I look at myself in the mirror, I'm grateful to be back to the way that I was. And yeah. it's not to say that I'm not grieving. I'm not going through those stages of regret or shame or guilt. I have, and will probably continue to experience that here and there, putting on a bikini with my girlfriends when we did a, um, the polar dip, uh, or not the polar dip, it was April, but it was still freezing. <laughs> um, still putting on a bikini in front of your girlfriends for the first yeah, time. Yeah, that was, that was, um, you know, that was an interesting journey. And, and I'm so grateful that I had done that with those girls. So I think choosing your company, much like you choose your social media, is yeah. so important as well because they were just so encouraging and so loving and so supportive of you look amazing you know and, and you feel amazing and you're all natural and so I've really been focusing on on that it's it's um like Monica said about the clothing I have really I've already started to shop for an entirely new wardrobe so I have ditched about three bags of dresses and tops because they just don't, they were there to accentuate my cleavage, which I no longer have much of. And so now I'm exploring and experiencing these new athletic style clothing and these little tops that like the one I have on that doesn't need a bra or, you know, bra straps. Like I just, it's fun. So awesome. I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm having fun with the, I'm having fun with the new look. <laughs> so what I hear is that you're focusing on the joys that this experience is giving you. And this new stage is that where you're at, which I think is important for everyone to, to find the pieces that you can latch onto and be excited about. That's, that's so good. Now you mentioned, you know, that earlier Mika, the younger Mika that made this decision, if you could now say something to your younger you when she was deciding on getting implants, what would you say? Yeah, that's great. So the number one question I would ask is why, like, <laughs> why, why do you want them? And then I would dig into that. I, you know, I would dig in. Is it somebody that you saw that you admire? Is it somebody that said something to you? Is it that your mom has naturally big ones and you don't, and you want to have a deeper connection with your mom? You know, my background is clinical counseling and I, I so I, I would go really deep from a psychological perspective into exploring those reasons so that we can we can really get deep and understand where does it come from and then we can we can have fun with it, believe it or not. And that's what's helped me through my journey is going back to yeah. my 23 year old self and going, why did I do that? And like, OK, now I know why I did it, which has helped me to undo it. <laughs> yeah. And I think that would be the conversation that, that absolutely I would have. And if it's a boy, I would say, you know, have a conversation with the boy because my husband, bless his heart, was such an incredible cheerleader throughout the whole process. And I know women struggle with uh, how am I going to feel intimately with my husband and Monica and I've had such great conversations and I hope she'll touch on that. Um, yep. It's because he, he's just been such an advocate for me being real and if you were to, if, if a 23 year old girl or an 18 year old girl or a 33 year old girl had a boyfriend or a husband um, that wanted, I would say to them, what if you knew that the risks were that I could be lethargic, sleep 14 hours, not want to exercise anymore, gain a bunch of weight, um, stop remembering everything and not have any zest for life? Would you still want me to have those breast implants? Because that's the real conversation. Yeah, so true. And a lot of what you're saying 
is what someone can ask themselves now if they're considering it and if a friend is considering it. And I like that you went into that inquisitive place rather than, oh, don't do it. Don't hear all the negatives. And I think that's also where maybe a parent can come from that curious place. But Monica, what about you? Um, what would you say to your younger you in that moment of considering? And then uh, just a heads up for our listeners, we are going to talk about intimacy and romance and how our, our breasts have come into the play with that. So we're going to, we're going to open that up after this. So Monica, you first though. Um, I think I would, I I mean, I know for sure that I would do exactly what Mika said. Um, You know, back when I got them, I was 23 as well. I'm a little bit older than Mika and the only access to, you know, discovering what implants were and, and, you know, was magazines. Right. So that's kind of how I found for my information. Um, but I was dating at the time a, a gentleman, a boy, um, who pushed me into doing them. Now, I'm not going to say that I didn't want them, um, but that was the exact question that I asked myself when I got them out. And I started to feel really kind of crappy about it last year. But you know what? Like, why do you want them? Um, I'm dating a man now who actually had a, a really good question, or a really good, he posed a good question to me and he said, um, what would be the reason for you wanting to have bigger breasts or, or anything, right? Adjust anything on your body. Like you really need to dig into that. Is it, is it for attention? <laughs> he said, is it to make you more aerodynamic when you're running? Is it to make you, you know, like, what is it? Right? <laughs> you know, because if it comes down to all these exterior things, they're the wrong things. And what you need to do is ask yourself inside, you know, like, is this going to improve my health? This is going to improve, you know, my well-being. And really, it all comes down to self-confidence and self-worth. And yeah. I think that is what women really need to focus on when they're considering doing any kind of plastic surgery to make them look better. Yeah. Right. You know, that really it comes down to self-worth and self-esteem and self-confidence. It's all about self. So my 23 year old self was insecure was easily coerced into doing things. And I, you know, I would, I'd have real stern conversation with her and say, look, (laughs) you know, um, you're doing these for the wrong reasons, sister. You got to start, you know, going to some self-development courses or something, right? Lift yourself up. Yeah. Get some self-love happening. And then, you know, take the focus off the exterior and put it right back onto the interior. That's the bottom line. Yeah. I'm, I'm so glad that both of you are now a mentor to other women around this, both in the, the place of should I get them or I have them? And and now how do I go through that process? And how do I get healthy again? I love that you're doing that. And we'll touch on that in a moment. But let's go to that touchy subject that can be maybe a little bit more vulnerable. But it's what I know the listeners are wondering about, like, being and having an explant, how has this now affected your romantic life? Has it affected your romantic life? You're both with um, in romantic relationships. Um, so how has it changed? And then what would advice would you give a woman that's like, oh, but I'm concerned about my romantic life or what guys will think when I get naked? What would you say to them? Monica, we'll start with you. Okay, well, here's what's really great is that Mika and I are going to have totally different answers because she's married. She's been with her husband for a long, long time. When I got my implants out, I was single. So I was going into the whole dating world after 27 years of being Barbie (laughs) and now being flat chested with, you know, more scars than a football, right? So um, I was I was nervous as heck, I have to tell you, and the gentleman that I'm with now, um, I don't know when this podcast is going to be released, but, but you know, around five months. And um, so I, I was extremely nervous that he was going to A, be grossed out about the scars, um, B, find my flat chest completely unattractive. Wow. Um, so, you know, that, that was a very, very real concern of mine. I think... You know, before I go into, you know, how he reacted with it, how I reacted with it, I think the most important thing is that when you're looking for, let's say, I can only speak to, you know, those women who don't have a partner at the moment. And then, of course, there's going to be some crossover. But I think the most important thing is that when you take, you know, the focus off of your looks and you start to 
project like who you are as a woman, your, your self-confidence, all of the good and amazing attributes about yourself, you know, your brain and your heart and your caring and your loving and your compassion and empathy for people and a zest for life. You know, that's the kind of person you're going to attract. And yeah. so I, I really tried hard to take the focus off of my physical, you know, looks and my physical exterior, you know, possibly, um, you know, the, the, the shiny, you know, coin that's, that's going to get somebody's attention and really kind of focus on my personality to me to tell the truth. And the great thing is, is that I ended up with a man who, you know, he said to me, he says, I never even once thought about it. You know, when we were intimate for the first time, he said, I, it, I, I saw it, but it never even registered. It was like, I was like attracted to you as a person, your personality, uh -huh. your laughter. And so that is just carried through. And, and ironically, just a couple of days ago, I asked him, I said, I said, you know, sometimes I do miss my big boobs, right? And I said, you know, how would you feel about having me with big boobs? And I just, I honestly wanted to see what his, his answer was going to be. And he was very genuine. He said, I'm not interested in big boob Monica. He says, this is the Monica that, that I like, right? He says, I, I, I like how you are, right? So for me, it was just kind of like, wow, it, it was just so, so encouraging. And so I think really the most important thing is that, you know, look, when it comes to like, when it comes to being in bed, ladies, with your man, your boobs are, are they're, they're just like a pillow on a couch, right? They're, they don't really do much, you know, um, you know, it's, there's so much more to being intimate. It's about how much you care for somebody, about how much laughter, how safe they make you feel. What is your, how many memories have you created? What, you know, what is your energy together? And your breasts are such a small, small part of that. They're, and the reality is we still have boobs. They're just not really big, <laughs> right? So it's okay. True. And and I know some women, you know, they've had mastectomies and they've had to have completely yes. everything taken off. They don't have any nipples or anything. But they too will tell you the same thing. They are still a woman, yeah. right? And there's so much more to us than just our boobs. And you know what? When you can find a gentleman who, <laughs> who like gets it and really likes you for who you are, I mean, God, that's it, right? That's it. So that's my experience. Um, in yeah, thank you for. Course, but you know, realizing in the end, it, it just doesn't matter because I'm not my boobs. I'm not my boobs. That's such a quotable. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not my boobs, and that's true because, really, as people, we should be leading with who we are, not a physical attribute. Yes. Whether it's your great hair or these days the butt, it seems to be the <laughs> big focus or thick thighs or whatever. It doesn't matter who you are is more important than those attributes. So I'm glad that you have brought this up and that you can, it sounds like you, that you attracted a wonderful man um, and potentially, you know, for some women, it, a better man, because you're focusing on who you are. I love it, Monica. Thank you. Thank you. Mika, how about you? How has this come into your romantic life in your marriage? Share as well, much as you want. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 well. Um, gee, you know, there's certain ways of making love that we no longer really do because it doesn't work anymore. Yes. <laughs> um, and uh, gosh, other than so, boy, I'm like nervous talking about it. <laughs> it's changed only in my head and not in his. See, it's, it's, it's me that was nervous for, I mean, we've been together for 14 years and I have never really wanted him to touch or not touch, but squeeze my breasts because they weren't real. And I had this thing in the back of my mind mm. that they might burst or they might leak or they might, I always had this thing in the back of my mind that, that Worry. he could pop them. So yeah. So I had to be in control of how I use them in intimacy. It wasn't wow. for him. It, like, honestly. And so I am so glad now. 
that like that's all gone that's all that fear is gone it's like you can do whatever you want (laughs) they're they're all yours i'm having so much fun with them that being said there is a real feeling of it's an out-of-body experience um you know all my lingerie um some little outfits that i have just yeah. in my head, don't play the same. In yeah. his head, they're completely the same. <laughs> it's all the work that I need to do on me. It's nothing to do yeah. with him and everything to do with me and how I think and how I see and how I show up in the bedroom. It's like, I don't know if you've ever seen a woman who's in her 70s or 80s or even 90s and they smile. And they're the most beautiful woman you've ever seen in your life yes. because of that that trillion dollar smile. And that's how I feel about my breasts. If, if I can wear them like that 90 year old smile, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter the size of them or the look of them or how bad my scars are or if I have nipple sensation anymore. That is not going to change the the when we breathe together yes when we kiss each other when we caress each other when we're moving together when we're flirting with each other none of that is different that is all the same because like monica i am not my boobs yep my boobs don't define me at all um and i do want to say that in my clothing I still keep my bras that I used to wear. A lot of them are very padded because I have quite noticeable nipples. <laughs> and so I, I still wear them sometimes. And it's interesting because I'll put it on and my boob is like this big and the cup is like this big. So they just kind of sit in the bottom of the cup. But because it's so nicely padded, and there's this nice little lace around it. I can still wear some of the tops that I wore or some of the lingerie that I wore yeah. and feel great in it there's just you know they're like empty pillowcases but they've been you know stuffed with yeah. <laughs> whatever and, it, and so it just gives me that freedom to play a little bit more I can go bra less or I can wear a bra and have big ones in a tight sweater like it's totally up to me <laughs> that's, actually that's a really good tip for for some women who still want to maybe their favorite dress or a favorite a top that just makes them feel so good and they want to wear it that's a, that's a nice adaptation to be able to do that so as we kind of pull this to a close ladies like how is this now I'm curious, how has this now come into your current career, your current business? Um, and how do you support women just in, just in general? Like, how do you do that? Um, well, I'll, I'll speak to that. Um, with my coaching, I've realized that, you know, through this whole explant process for myself, um, that our self-confidence and self-worth is really at the root of everything. It's at the root of why we're not financially successful, why we're not physically successful. I mean, when it comes to like the body type that you want or the shape or the fitness level, um, you know, eating issues, uh, you know, plastic surgery, not just breast implants, but, you know, Botox and, you know, all this kind of stuff, right? Um, It all comes down to the same thing. It all comes down to self-worth, self-love. And so whenever I'm coaching with all of, you know, my clients, you know, whether it be they want to, you know, help a relationship that they're in or financial business wise, whatever. I take it right back to self-worth. It's like, why do you have a money block? Let's talk about that. You know, why do you want to get plastic surgery? Let's talk about that. Um, So I think it's been a really good growing experience for Mm -hmm. me and, and learning and realizing that, you know, everything in life, every success we have in life is dependent on what and how we view ourselves. Um, And we also teach others to treat us a certain way. Yeah. And that also plays into our relationships and our business relationships. And it's just all part of the same bundle, right? It's part of the same package. So True. that's kind of how it's, it's flowed back into all of my businesses that I have, um, you know, even personal training, right? It's, it's everything. I love it. Yeah. So that self-worth is at the core of everything and you help to, to expose it and to move 
through it so people can reach whatever their goals are in life and business. Absolutely. That's awesome. How about you, Mika? Yeah, ditto. Um, it's all about this. It's all about the self-worth. So, um, I, you know, I, I go back to my, my modeling and my acting days, you know, that's really 20 close 25 years of my life. And I was in a business of rejection. You know, I would go out and get rejected every single day, all day long. You're too tall. You're too short. You're too white. You're too canned. You're too, you know, thick. You're too this, your eyes are too far apart, too close together. You get the wrong hair color, like you name it. So I ended up coming out of that with the, the clear understanding that it's not personal um, because you know, it's like going to a party and they're playing rock and roll and you like country or they're playing hip hop and you like jazz. It's just, you, you cannot please all the people all the time. And so if you attract your tribe and you, and you surround yourself with people that, that like what you like and, and, you know, um, they're, they're, you know, they're your tribe, they're your people, then you're not swimming up current and you're feeling better about yourself. And if you do like to have some, uh, you know, a place where you're looking to be challenged, then find a place that you're looking to be challenged in a business, not in a relationship, not in a relationship with yourself <laughs> or your, or your life partner, because that's just, it's not going to, it, it, you're not going to win in the end. Um, nobody wins when there's constant challenge. Right. So in my business, it's, it's always been about that. And now I feel like this has all happened for me and not to me. And that's like my big lesson. I got that from Tony Robbins. It's like things in life happen for us. They don't happen to us. And the, 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 the blessing of getting sick from these implants had propelled me to learn more about nutrition and go back to school and all these things, the last decade of my life and all the businesses that I've created and the people that I've worked with and supported yeah. paid and unpaid is all because of my breast implant illness. So I'm so grateful for that opportunity. And now that they're out, I am so driven to speak to young girls who were like me at 23 or 18 girls. Now we're getting them as graduation presents from their parents, wow. um, you know, and they're going in and they're getting them done because the doctors are saying that they're totally safe and, you know, blah, blah, blah. They're FDA approved, all these things. So girls don't know any better and it's not their fault. So I am super gung ho about raising awareness for those young girls and working with them to love themselves through the way that they are and focusing on their attributes, just like Monica said, and then go out and serve the world with that. So it's, it's propelled my business to become laser focused from coaching this and this and this and this and all this to, I want to work with girls to help them not get their implants. That's yes. Or support them through the getting the, the explant of them. Of course, supporting yeah. them through explant. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, uh, you both, I, I'm just so grateful that you have been here to share your true story, the reality of what you went through, and to really hear the success that you're having now, both in your, your physical life, because that your health is so important, but also just how you're using this as fuel to support other women. And I can hear you both kind of on your little soapboxes and I'm listening to every word. I love it. So in the show notes, um, to our listeners in the show notes, you're going to find ways to connect with both Mika and Monica. I encourage you to do so whether you have implants or not. Um, they have a lot to offer. So I encourage you to do so and share this episode with other women in your life or even other men who need to hear how to be around real women and how to support them through their decisions uh, rather than kind of force them and to embrace them as women, as people, humans, rather than as their boobs, because we're not our boobs, <laughs> as you guys said, we're not our breasts. Uh, so please put a comment as well to share how you felt about this episode and subscribe because every other episode on the Dynamic Women podcast, I bring in dynamic women like Mika and Monica. So a final thank you to both of you for being here. Much appreciation. And to everyone, until next time, stay dynamic. Bye. Bye.